bad guy don't so come say hi to the bad guy don't so come say hi to the bad guy don't so come say hi to the bad guy don't. say hello to the bad guys man what's up folks there's nothing better to do it's your boy blogzilla you're watching the no judgment zone today i have the guy with the hottest podcast on the internet i've listened to a couple of episodes shit is hilarious my guy tax what's going on ain't shit man maintaining how's it going man it's going great actually how have you been enjoying great. the response of tax season the response is shocking like i didn't even expect people that many people to like really fuck with it yeah. it's like because i thought i just had more people that didn't like me than anything and it's like i don't know i got a little People fucking with me. We were getting into a lot of little Twitter debates with people, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I voice my opinion. Like, you know, I just feel like I say shit that sometimes people won't say because of relationships or they feel like they want to be cool with this person. I'm not here to do that. What else you got going on? I heard you doing TV and shit now, too. Yeah, I just... You on television? You're like a star. I just actually left MTV and stuff. We um doing a show at Charlemagne, a panel yeah. show called um Uncommon Sense. And stuff, so we're waiting, waiting for that to brew. It feel, does it feel good to be making money and to like making a personality and a name for yourself off of just who you are? Yeah, because you know, I always, since I was young, I got, as long as I can remember, people always was like, yo, you belong on radio because of your voice or you just was hilarious, you know what I mean? So just to see me just being myself and people gravitating towards it just of me being myself is the best thing possible because I ain't got to act for nobody. You tweeted something about the chick. Uh, cocaine Lorraine when they put the pictures out of her. Yeah, I looked for like an hour to try to figure out who the hell that was. I was like, I don't even know this chick. I never saw her before. I saw her, but I wasn't sure. Yeah, she's like so like beautiful to me. Yeah, and then someone put like they had nut on her face. Yeah, that's but cool. All girls have nut on their face. My mom's might have a picture out there somewhere with nut on her face. Who knows? You know, I'm pretty sure in order for me to be creative, my mother had to get some nut on her face once or twice. So. I know you heard about the boy Mendeecees. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think about his? Is he, you think he gonna go to jail? You think he copped the plea? Yeah, they said he copped out. You know what I mean? Um, I think I think that's best for him. He he took the best thing that he could take. You know what I mean? You know when you know when they gonna slay you, and you know when you just gotta take whatever you gonna take. And he was smart by taking what he was gonna take and just standing up like a man and yeah. and doing what he gotta do. You know what I mean? What do you think about the? Do you watch Love and Hip? You watch reality TV? I've been I fell out of the realm of Love and Hip Hop the last season. It yeah. just was getting too much for me. It was too scripted. It was too fake. The people I was using was just. To, it's just like you know you could just tell they just met them and said oh you're good for tv come on you're good mm -hmm. for tv and it just was like you know what i mean it was it was whack to me like what's up with you and the boy troy ave because you go hard for him why don't you like troy ave or at least appreciate what he's done because i do honestly feel like he's at least shined the light on new york that allow other people to flourish i don't feel that way at all i feel it i feel troy ave is a hustler and he's a grinder. I always, anytime I speak to a rapper, I compare what they do to Trey Ave. I say, listen, you know Trey Ave work harder than you. And that's why he gonna win. Don't let his work ethic outshine your talent. And I always tell that to different people. Just mm -hmm. people, period, because I admire his grind. I seen Trey Ave selling CDs in 2004. I had a, a argument with him about to fight him because he was trying to sell me a CD in 2004. You know what I mean? At Getty Gas Station on Pennsylvania and Flatlands. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, like, I respect his grind, but he's a liar. He's a pathological liar, and I can't fathom that. When you get on radio and you say shit like, you know, I bought New York City back with what record? You didn't, you haven't had a record yet. It's like, he did Your Style, Your Style came out, and then he had, um, um, what was the, um, then they got Diddy and Mace on it. It didn't do nothing after that. It died more after they put Diddy and Mace on it. And then they had... But um, it was getting played across the country. Like the first time. No, it was a cool other record. Than, Don't get it twisted. That people. was a cool record. It was a, um... It was a barbecue record. Your grandmoms could have did so. It was fun. I respected it. Now, see, this is the thing. People don't understand this. I don't dislike Trey F to the point to where if he gets something that's bumping, that I won't say that it's hot and I won't say, yo, this is some shit. He ain't do that yet. You have to prove yourself when you talk shit. I talk a lot of shit, and I'm willing to prove myself. So that's what I'm saying. Prove yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't keep saying that you bought the city back, and then you have no records. Like, Brooklyn don't come out to his performances. Like, we don't, they don't go nowhere. So only people that performances is bloggers and radio. Nobody is there. Nobody from the town is saying, yo, let's go check this show out. Yeah. You know what now, I mean? I understand what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Like, there was a difference between uh, 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 the shmoney dance, and, and your style. Mm -hmm. A big difference. Yes. But Troy Ave being out there saying all of this stuff, saying all of this stuff, mm -hmm. if it wasn't for that, there would be no Bobby Schmurder, in think my so. opinion. I don't think so. I think Bobby, I think Bobby, before I even gravitated towards the dance, I looked at Bobby and knew Bobby was a star. 
Yeah. Just as how time. you move, everything. I'm saying, this dude is a star. First time you saw it, you knew it. Yeah. So that's what made me gravitate more towards promoting Bobby Schmurder's record. And they're yeah. like, a lot of people knew that I didn't like Troy Ave music. So they like, oh, I think they're only promoting this guy because of him. But it was like, no. We this is what we fucking with. Yeah, no, this no, is what clear. every one of us is fucking with right now. We fucking with the shmoney dance. We want to do the shmoney dance. We want to know what they're gonna drop. We want to know what next music is. Nobody was checking for what he was putting out. So it was like it was like if you ask any rapper that's that's out there that's established from New York City, they will tell you the same thing. None of them ever felt like Troy Ave bought the city back. So that's why it was so confusing to me. I was like, bought the city back? What do you mean? What did you do? What record? And then he dropped all about the money and it was like, that wasn't your record. When we liked that, it was like, okay, cool. And then it was like, oh shit, Manolo Rose wrote the whole record. It was like, all right, what's next? Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was confusing. So I was like, and I keep like, I don't care. This like I said, if he put out some hot shit, I'ma say it. It's hot. It is what it is. Doodoo. -doo. A lot of people don't like doodoo. -doo. I kinda like the shit. I hear the shit come on, I sing the record, you know what I mean? But it ain't that hot to me, and it ain't as hot as you portray your image to be. So when, when he was on Hot 97 and they ask him, hey, did you do the thing to McConan? Did you send your, your BSB family to hit McConan? And he says, oh no, I didn't do that or whatever. You know, in my city, my city loved me the same way Drake get love in Canada, I'm sitting in such confusion because I'm like, I need to find at least three people that he's talking about. So, <laughs> now, I've been hearing rumors. I know I bumped into you guys who was Fame School, you were with Fame School, yeah. you guys were super deep in Austin, but I keep hearing rumors that you guys ran down on OG Mako and his crew. Is that true? I know he was at a performance that he didn't show up at. Yeah, it's true. Um, OG Mako, it was, it was really no issues with OG Mako. Like, basically, we, um, when when Manolo put Run Ricky Run out, you know, it was buzzing through the city and it just started going like through the states and people got whiff of it. And I guess OG Mako fans got whiff of it and they started saying that Run Ricky Run sounded like OG Mako's record, fuck him three times. But we never heard the record. Like, we, it never touched New York for us to hear it, to yeah. even bite it. So we never really paid attention to it when people were saying it. But I think the more and more fans were saying it, it might have went to his head. So he might have felt the ways. And you know, we was thinking it was all love. He, he remixed the record and then when he remixed the record, he came at Manolo on the record. He was mm. like coming at him on the record. And I still promoted it, didn't care, just to show them like, we don't even give a fuck, you know what I mean? Cause it wasn't that serious. And then we seen them in, in, in Austin, an alley, and it was nothing. It was dark at night, it was nobody said nothing. It was no foul words, nothing. We thought it was cool. And then the next day we had a performance and while during the performance they was like throwing a whole bunch of water on us. But I didn't notice, I was on stage, but I didn't know that they was throwing water. So after, after like every performance in event Manolo would take pictures and do press so he was like yo tax we going upstairs so when we went upstairs the all I hear is Manolo Rose says yo oh y'all can suck my dick and then I knew it was an issue I was like oh shit like you know what I mean I got on guard so like it was a lot of security and police came and broke the incident up so we didn't really get too much words in or whatever so then we went to the Elmore the next night that night, matter of fact, later on that night, we went to the Elmore and we seen OG Mac on there and we, and we ran down, we ran down on them or whatever and we, we just hollered at them like, yo, what up? Is it gonna be an issue or is it not? You know what I mean? Because we not gonna play with y'all. Like y'all sitting here picking at us. We not soft, we not pussy. We just don't have no issues with you. And it's like, that. I guess they were just taking a humbleness and kindness for a weakness. So yeah. once we got aggressive with them again, it was kumbaya, my lord. We all black trying to get money. Let's get money together. We all men. We men. Let's speak like men and just handle the situation. You know what I mean? That was my whole thing. Because, you know, when Mako first came out, I love Bitch You Guessed It. Because I felt like it was so different. Mm -hmm. And I used to speak about it a lot. Like, yo, his the, the reason he gets noticed is because he's so different. You know what I mean? I be telling people, be different. Be some, You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's why when it, when it came around to all of that, I was like, I was like, I was offended because I'm like, damn, y'all like dude. Like, ain't no issue with him, you know what I mean? So, but it was, it's all cleared up or whatever. It ain't, it, it's no issues with them dudes. Shout out to Mako. So, but let's go back to how you got hooked up with Manola Rose because you, now you're down with Fame School and everything, but mm -hmm. prior to the record, you weren't down with them, right? You just yeah. were a fan of the music? I just, I, somebody, somebody um, sent me Run Ricky Run performance and they was like, listen to this record. And I heard it, Uber Seif, my son Seif, and I, I listened to the record and I was like, then this shit is hard. And then I heard it again and I said, this shit is hard and I liked it. So 
I was gonna promote the record because I knew I had a following. I knew a lot of influential people follow me. And then I was I was gonna promote the record and I said I wasn't gonna do it because then I realized he was cool with Troy Ave. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I was like, I didn't want to help nobody that was down Troy Ave. And then I thought about it again and I said, that's a crab in a barrel mentality. And I've been trying to like, you know, get out of that whole mentality of being a crab in a barrel type person. So I was like, you know what, if you cool with Trey Ave and not, I'ma help him. You know what I mean? I ain't got nothing to do with it. So I just kept promoting the record and they reached out and then like I went to the studio and I was in the studio with these dudes, you know what I mean? They like fifty deep in the studio. I'm sitting there like at any moment they could be like, Oh, you got beef for Trey Ave and jump me in here, you know what I mean? But I didn't give a fuck. So I told them and I was like, Yo, listen, I don't like Trey Ave, I'm gonna let y'all know that right now. And then they end up telling me about everything that happened with the record. Yeah. And like that's just how shit went. Uh are you in the music industry? How 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 the how whole thing come about well the, I always was around like my cousin was working at bad boy I used to be there from when I was young in 99 2000 stuff like that then he started working at Atlantic I used to hang out with him there do like a little ghostwriting and shit but the, the way I just like got into it just now was just on social media I had so many like execs following me on Twitter and different radio personalities following me you know what I mean that like and then the, the, the people following me and they just they, they like they respect my opinion so I would talk about a certain record or people would just be like yo tap check this out and tell me what you think you know what I mean yeah so it just came to the point where people just started respecting my opinion to where I just started promoting music all the time like a lot of people don't know like we like we started promoting like with Chief Keef hmm. if you ask me Chief Keef got his deal because of us like and I don't think people was like really paying attention to him then and then you know we went on we had did like Wink Loke Wink Loke he got his situation with Jeezy and then we like we just kept on going after that, and then Bobby, and then Manolo, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I just kept going after that. That's what's up. It's always good to hear shit and just be able to spread it to the masses. I want to thank you very much for coming by. I know you got to go. I uh, appreciate you. That's our show, folks. Join us next week when we jump Ray Charles impersonators, put paper bags over the head, and hit them with the people's elbow. Blah! What's up, this Tax Stone on Global Grind. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, T-A-X-S-T-O-N-E. One love. You're like, this nigga, yeah, it's not. This nigga can't even talk like that. How the fuck you say exceptional shit? Her face, the look on her face when you surprise her with. All right. <laughs>